Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahla wa sahlan. Welcome guys to this video. My name is Yaqid Zaman and we are going through Mukhtasar al-Qudul. If you guys are not familiar with my channel, check out the videos that I make. I make videos on all sorts of things. Some things that you'll probably like, some things I don't know you might not be interested in. But uh, show some love to the channel, hit the subscribe button. And uh, yeah, let's start then. So he says, Man kana lahu watan. Watan means residence, place of residence. Okay, a place where you stay at. It's considered to be like your your permanent residence, basically. Right? It's called a watan al-asli. So <clears throat> then you have istautana yastautinu istitan, which means to make a place your residence. Right? To stay in a place. So if you, let's say you move from one city to another city, you would say you istautanta. Right. Um, and then you have a lot of these other words are words that we have come across before. So I don't think there's much need of us going through them uh so i'm just trying to think which one over here okay fi'lan means physically right physically and uh waqtan means in 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 a specific time zone okay safina is a ship or a boat and then illa bi other other means excuse and then you've got qadaha wa man fatathu hadar means like residence as well place where you're kind of staying Asi means disobedient and muti is the opposite, obedient. Ruksa is dispensation, like a legal dispensation. Right, so it's like a, a kind of ease, ease, a rule that's given for ease. All right, so uh, so this will be a tarkib. Kana is fi'il, watan is the ism. Intaqala is fi'il plus fa'il. Istautana is again fi'il plus fa'il as well. Ghayrahu is the, is the maful bihi. Al awal is the sifa of watan. Al salata is the maful bihi of the yutim. Uh, then you've got uh, mina, maka mina, maka is ghil munsarif. Khamsata ashara. Yes, those of you got to go right last time. So khamsata ashara, this is what we call a mabni murakab. Um, so the vowels are always fatha. Lil musafiri, jar majroor. Fi'lan is going to be tamiz. And then waqtan is going to be tamiz as well. As you got the means there. Salatu is the file of the Juzu. Safinatin Majroor. Qaidan is Hal. Hanifata is Ghir Munsarif. Udrin Munfatat Hu. Salatun Fis Safari. Qadaha Fil Hadari. All these are straightforward. You guys probably know all this anyway. Asi uh, Walmuti. Okay, tell me why is it not Asi you? Why is it not Asi you? So if you know the answer, why it's Asi without putting a dhamma on there. Put in the comments. <clears throat> Let's see if you guys can get this. Sawa'un is the um, the khabar. Okay. Right. Next. Let's explain the masla then. So there's several masail that we're going to cover over here. Okay. So masal number one. If you have a residence, let's say your permanent residence is in Birmingham. And you are going to leave Birmingham and you're going to go somewhere like about 100 miles distance. So Birmingham, you got what an asli. And then you're going to move to another city, which is more than 48 miles, let's say. More than, what, three days journey. Uh, and you, you you make residence there. Like, for example, you went to Manchester, you went to London. So the, the person over there is now has changed his residence. So Birmingham is no longer the Watan Asli for that person. Now. All right, so this is the new Watan. So the question is, if he ever visits Birmingham again, is he going to be in the ruling of a musafir or as a resident? So the, the answer is he's going to be a visitor. Yeah, so he's going to be in the ruling of a musafir. So he only prays Dhuhr, Asr and, Ma and Isha, two rakats. So this is if it's a long distance, like 100 miles. Okay? If it's obviously just down the road, like, you know, 10 miles, 15, 20 miles, then no. Then he's going to be considered to be a muqim because he hasn't gone out of the area. All right, so this is uh, musafir. Okay, so man kana lahu, man kana lahu watan. So whoever has a watan for himself, meaning whoever has a permanent residence, fantaqala anhu, and then he moves from that place. Wastautana ghayrahu, and then he makes residence another place. <coughs> he no longer is considered to be in that city to be a resident, right? So, I mean, if you have any questions, put it in the comments. But I think I've cleared, I've, I've cleared it up, right? So you move from one place to another. That old place that you used to live at is no longer your your residence 
Okay. Uh, ثم سافر فدخل وطن أول and then he traveled and he entered the first وطن again meaning Birmingham again. لم يت لم يتم الصلاة. He does not complete his salat, meaning he does not pray the full salat. He is considered to be a musafir. Okay, next masla. Uh, let's say a person goes for hajj. Yeah, so a person's gone for hajj. He has gone for hajj and in hajj, what happens is you stay in Makkah and you stay in Mina. Right, those are the two main places where you're going to stay. So let's say, for example, he is deciding to stay in both of them for a combined 15 days. <clears throat> so he's going to stay in Makkah and Mina. So Mina is like, it's just on the outskirts, right? It's like, you know, it's not really, the distance between Makkah and Mina is very, very small. I mean, you can actually just walk between Makkah and Mina. It'd probably take about half an hour. And from the Masjid al Haram, it'd probably take about 40, well, an hour, let's say an hour, just to walk it. So it's not that far. So the guy decides to stay in Makkah and Medina a combined 15 nights. Right, 15 days. So will he be considered a Musafir? So these two locations are very close. So the answer is no. He won't be considered a Musafir. He has to stay in one of the two places for 15 or more days. So let's say nine days in Makkah, six days in Mina. He won't be considered a, a Muqim, a resident. He'll still be considered a Musafir. So he's going to pray Dhuhr, Asr, Isha, two rakats, Right? But if he, if he decides to stay in one place for 15 days, right, then in that case, he will be considered to be a resident. And he prays the full prayer. So he says, وَإِذَا نَوَى الْمُسَافِرُ When the Musafir intends and Yuqima to stay bi Makkah, at Makkah, وَمِنَ and Mina خَمْسَةَ عَشَرَ يَوْمًا For 15 days, لَمْ يُتِمَّ الصَّلَاةِ He's not going to complete his Salat, meaning he's not going to pray the Zuhr, Asr and Isha as four accounts. Alright, so this masala is done. Let's have... Um, I'm just trying to think, shall I explain anything else? Alright, let's do another masala. Another masala is this now. So there is this idea of combining salats. You probably heard of this, right? Combining salats, zuhur and asr, maghrib and isha. So if there is a person, are they allowed to pray zuhur and asr in one of the salat times? So we know, for example, like zuhur and asr. Let's say asr starts at 3 o'clock. Right, so 3 o'clock Asr starts. Can someone pray their Zuhur and Asr in Asr time? Or Zuhur and Asr in Asr time? So, Zuhur and Asr in Zuhur time? Or Zuhur and Asr in Asr time? Can they do that? This is called Jama' Waqti. <clears throat> Jama' Waqti means in one Waqt, in one time, you combine two Salats. And Jama' Fi'li means in each time you pray the Salat at its allocated time, but when you pray them, you pray them so close together, it's as though you're praying them together, like physically you're praying them together. The two times. Right, so let me show you an example of this. So for example, so let's say this is Zohar time, right? So Zohar starts at 12, finishes at 3, and then Asr starts at 3 and finishes, let's say, at 5 o'clock. So if a person was to pray their Zohar right at the end of Zohar time, right at the end, yeah, so it makes it bigger. So for instance, like, what's the time just before Zohar? So... So physical combination, I want to show you guys. 2.50, let's say. 2.50, he prays his dhuhr. It takes him about 5 to 10 minutes to pray dhuhr. Pray his dhuhr. And then he prays his asr at 3 o'clock. Bang on 3 o'clock. Has he prayed the salat, each salat on its correct time? Yes, he has. But he's kind of like physically combined them together. Physically, he's brought them together. By, by delaying the dhuhr and by bringing the asr forward. So Hanafi say, this is jais. You can do this. This is allowed. What you can't do is pray... The two salats in one salat time. Right? So, wal jam'u bayna salatain and combining between two salats for the musafir, lil musafir, yajuzu fi'lan, it's permissible if it's going to be physically the combining. Wala yajuzu waqtan, but it's not permissible if it's going to be in one salat time. So, what does it mean in one salat time? Like I said, I showed you guys. Right? So, for instance, let's say a person wants to pray his dhuhr uh, and asr in dhuhr time. Or dhuhr and asr in asr time. Not allowed. The only time the Hanafi say you're allowed to do this is in Arafat. In Arafat, you can pray the Zuhur and Asr in the Zuhur time. That's the only place. And Maghrib and Isha in Muzdalifa, in, 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 in Hajj. Right. So these are the only two times the Hanafi say you can combine in one Salat time, Waqtan. Otherwise you can't. In other Madhabs, you know, they allow the combination of Salats with according to their conditions. 
Okay, I think I've clarified that one. Next one now. Um, so, uh, you know when you pray on a ship, let's say there's a ship there. <clears throat> the problem with praying on a boat, I'm not talking about like a big cruise ship, I'm talking about a small ship, is that the waves are so strong that they move the boat around and a lot of people feel nausea. So Imam Hanifa rahimahullah, he says that you can actually pray sitting down if you want to. Right, that would be a sufficient enough reason to sit down and pray. You don't have to stand up. If you want to stand up, you can stand up. Otherwise, you can sit down. Sahibain say, if you're not feeling dizzy, you cannot sit down. You have to pray standing. Right, you got to pray your salat standing, ruku, and then go down to sujood, and then all that stuff. You got to do it properly. Abu Hanifa says, no, you can actually sit down. Even if you're not feeling dizzy, you can sit down. All right, so this is to do with a boat that's out in sea. Like, you have to sit. You have to stand, you have to like do all the arkan uh, correctly, which is including standing and all that. And Imam Muhammad and Abu Yusuf, uh, Abu Hanifa says, no, you can actually sit down. So uh, he says, unless you're feeling dizzy, like I said, then everyone says you can sit down. Then there's no difference of opinion. So he says, what a juzu salatu, salat is permissible, fi safinatin, in a ship, qa'idan, sitting, ala kulli hal. Upon every condition, meaning in every condition. In the Abi Hanifa, the Rahimahullah. So whether the water is still <coughs> or whether the water is shaky, it's fine. And according to them too, it's not permissible except with a valid reason. <coughs> right, so you can you have to have a valid reason for it. Okay. Uh, next masala. Just two more masalas left, inshallah. So we've done so far. One, two, three, four masalas so far. Today's, I think, is the most masalas we've done. But the text isn't that long. Strange. Okay, question. If there's a person and that person is on a journey, and on that journey, let's say, for example, they they happen to miss, they happen to miss some prayers. When they get back home, how do they make up those prayers? Do they have to make them up like Zohar, Asr, and Isha? Do they have to do it full because they're at home now? Or because they missed them on the journey, do they have to just make up two? So this is the question of a person missing prayers on a journey and then getting home and vice versa. So let's say, for example, like a person's on a journey, right? This red represents journey. So let's say every day they've been praying all their salats on time. And one day they got ill, they didn't pray. And then they went home. So those missed prayers, how do they make them up? So what they do is they pray it. Uh, according to how it was missed, meaning they missed it <clears throat> in Safar on a journey. So now they've got to make up on a journey. Right? So let's say, so randomly just say, a homie decided to pray his Zuhur. He's going to pray the Qadha of Zuhur two rakats only. Asr two rakats, Isha two rakats. Right? That's talking about the missed prayers, okay? Not the prayers that currently he's praying. Those he's got to pray full. Now, <clears throat> the other way around, it's the same as that. So, man fatatu salatun, whoever misses a salat, fil uh, hadari, <coughs> sorry, man fatatu salatun fil safari, whoever misses a prayer on a journey, qadaha, he makes it up fil hadari, in residence, raka'atain, two rakats, referring to zuhr, asr, and isha. And what about the other way around? <coughs> or if a person misses some salats whilst he was at home, and on the journey now decides to make them up, what does he do? So he says, if a person does the opposite, so let's say, for example, he was at home before the journey, and one day he just was ill, didn't, didn't get to pray, <clears throat> and now on the journey he decides to do qada. He's going to do qada full. He's going to make the full salat, because the Hanafis say, you look at when that qada became necessary on you. So when that qada became necessary on you, were you a musafir or were you a muqim? Okay. <clears throat> and that's it. So, man fatatu salatun fi safari, whoever misses their prayer on a journey, qadaha, he makes it up fil hadar, raka'atain two raka'ats, wa man fatatu, and whoever misses salat fil hadar on a uh, in residence, qadaha, he makes it up fi safari on a journey, arba'an, four raka'ats. Right? So, I think that's straightforward. If you have any questions or anything, leave them in the comments for me. For last masala, whether you're disobedient or whether you're an obedient person, if you go on a Journey, you pray Zohar, Asr, Isha, two rakats. Yeah, so let's say, for example, there's a guy. And this guy goes on a journey. Right, he's a good guy, pious guy. He's going on a journey just for some business or some meeting family or friends. 
and he obviously you know praises the Lord Asar Isha two rakats. What about the person who is a thief who's going to rob someone who's going to do something which is against Islam? So can he take this dispensation? Because it's like the dispensation seems to be like a blessing from Allah. So if you're gonna go to do a crime in a different city, you know, are you allowed to take that blessing from Allah? So the Hanafi say yes, because the, it's got nothing to do with your 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 spiritual status, right? It's actually just got to do with the the journey itself. <clears throat> so whether you're a man or a woman, or whether you are you know uh, disobedient or uh, or not disobedient or sinful, etc., you take this ruhsa, meaning you pray the dhuhr, asr, and isha on a journey two rakats. And they say, so wal asi wal muti, the disobedient one and the obedient one on a journey fi safar fi rukhsati with regards to the dispensation the Sharia has given is C equal sawa. Jazakumullah khair, guys. I hope you guys benefit from today's lesson. We talked about many Muslims today. Check them out on the screen. Uh, thank you very much to my patrons. Patrons, Allahu Akbar. You guys are wonderful people. May Allah bless all of you guys. Um, you know, honestly, from the depths of my heart. Uh, really appreciate all the support you guys show. And it's almost been two years now. And you know, subhanAllah, since I started the Patreon, uh, and it's really helped me a lot to be able to make more videos, better quality, but there's still lots of room left for improving the quality, sound, editing, and all that. So <clears throat> if you guys want to become patrons as well, support my channel, or even pay, do a one-off payment thing, you can check out the description below. Really appreciate it, guys. Take care. Hope you guys have a wonderful week. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.